The year, 1954. Place, a lab in Western Germany owned by the company Gruenthal. What was there? A drug? A miracle? Distaval, Tensaval, Contragen, Kevadon. But the world commonly knows it as thalidomide. No one would know it yet, but this drug would change the course of history. It was a triumph because it could help treat diseases, and it sparked laws that forced pharmaceutical companies to be more careful, but at the cost of a tragedy that caused thousands of people and counting to suffer from severe physical abnormalities. Key events that shaped our health industry hadn't happened yet. This was a time before pill bottle murders, tamper-proof seals, and cross-contamination of heroin needles. It was a time that was a little more ignorant, which made everything feel a little safer. News of tragedy spread slower, but that may have been the root cause of the problems that occurred. Our story starts in the 50s. A home to communist housewives smoking, life was simple and grand. In the span of this decade, polio came, maimed, and left. The American Cancer Society found out smoking kills. The nation and the world seemed like it was improving, that the events of the war that occurred a decade before could finally fade. In 1957, thalidomide was sold in Germany under the company Grunthal as various things, including anti-flu, a hypnotic, anti-nausea in pregnant women, all available without needing to be prescribed by a doctor. It was basically a miracle cure-all, or so they thought. In total, it was sold under over 40 names in countries including Japan, Germany, and Canada, and was marketed as a non-toxic wonder drug for almost half a decade, from its first sales in Germany in 1957, to its eventual ban in Canada in 1962. Let's cut to the chase. What was so bad about a little pill? Thalidomide, chemical formula C13H10N2O4, is a type of teratogen, meaning it can cause malformations in the fetus. Following experiments on chicks in the 90s, it was found it bites the protein cerebellum while the fetus is still developing, thus inhibiting blood vessel formation and causing various side effects including the fusion of bones in the arm, flipper-like limbs that are connected at the torso, nerve injuries, missing fingers or toes, loss in senses, malformation of organs, or even death. Obviously, all of these are serious ailments, but at the time, no one knew that. Advertisers called it suitable for infants, the aged. German adverts even claimed it was the sleep aid of the century, not knowing the drug could cause serious harm that would spread in the years to come. By the time it was officially banned in the countries it was popular in, the damage was done. In total, about 10,000 to 20,000 babies were born with deformities, and countless others never made it past childbirth. But wait, how come so many in the US haven't heard of this? The US can thank one amazing lady, Dr. Frances Oldham Kelsey. Born in British Columbia in 1914, by 1960, Dr. Kelsey had gotten her PhD in pharmacology and was just starting to work for the Food and Drug Administration, a daring move considering society at the time did not value women in STEM fields. Thalidomide was her first case and supposedly an easy one since the drug was already approved in so many other countries. However, upon observation, she realized that there were few studies that proved the exorbitant claims it made. She said it was, quote-unquote, an interesting collection of meaningless pseudoscientific jargon apparently intended to impress chemically unsophisticated readers. The facade was over. Through investigations, they found thalidomide as the cause of these abnormalities in babies, and the drug was quickly sweeped off the market. Because of one woman's resolve and genuine concern in her job, thousands of children were saved from the complications that others had to suffer through. Possibly, Kelsey's inexperience could have been the world's saving grace. As a newbie, she was still alert and didn't fall into the teen and bad wagon mentality that her superiors had contracted, serving as a cautionary tale for future workers in her field. Shortly after this news was spread, President John F. Kennedy mandated Kefauver Harris amendments that would make sure the U.S. quote unquote established a framework that required drug manufacturers to prove scientifically that a medication was not only safe, but effective, and awarded Dr. Kelsey the Distinguished Federal Civilian Service Medal, and she was promoted to the Chief of the Division of Scientific Investigations in the FDA. While there, she created a three-trial system for proving the safety of drugs, which is now considered standard worldwide. Although this horrible tragedy occurred, it caused these laws to come about and prevent future instances of unsafe drugs from being sold and distributed to the public. Maybe this tragedy prevented an even worse one. 
Who knows what other dangerous drugs were prevented after the Kefauver-Harris laws were made. In addition, thalidomide hasn't completely disappeared from the medical community at all. In fact, in 1998, it was approved by the FDA. Despite its complicated past, it isn't like thalidomide never worked and had no actual medicinal value. It had worked for its purposes as a sedative, and in the modern day, it's being used in the US and Canada to treat AIDS, cancers, and leprosy. Additionally, the distribution of the drug is heavily monitored, and patients using it are usually elderly or have to take a pregnancy test. Many people forget, despite its horrible past, thalidomide itself is not completely blamed for these tragedies. The event is similar to that of smoking in the 50s and decades previous. The main reason they hurt so many was because marketers and retailers did not do enough research and did not warn the consumer. In the case of thalidomide, though, the negative preconceptions of it hindered the approval of a drug that could have been used to treat various ailments 40 years prior. This is where the story turns bleak once more. The babies born of thalidomide grew up with severe physical disabilities, and although this does not mean they cannot have a successful nor happy life, it still made their lives more difficult. Es, es una verdadera condena a cadena perpetua. O sea, nosotros condenados a, a cadena perpetua desde que nacimos hasta que moramos. Everything is more difficult. Um, getting dressed, um, cleaning the house, um, transportation. These people are still able to achieve their dreams like anyone else could, but it's no question the world wasn't made for their bodies. Daily chores and activities like making the bed, cooking, showering, using the bathroom are greatly affected by their condition and often make these simple chores seem much harder, which isn't fair because their condition was preventable if people had just paid more attention for the concern of those affected. But thalidomide's babies haven't completely disappeared. In fact, there have been cases in Brazil and Latin America within the last two decades and more that haven't been documented. This is because leprosy is a large problem in these areas, so thalidomide is heavily prescribed, which would not be a problem except that pregnant women are also taking the drug. Many Latin American countries are also still considered third world and often cannot provide the same handicap friendly features like that of their European counterparts. Therefore, the livelihoods of these children are likely going to be worse off compared to the original wave of thalidomiders. But what of the company that started all of this? What happened to the creator of this Catch-22? Well, it's still here. Gruntal still sells medications. As of August 31st, 2012, they made their formal apology and have given people compensation to help pay for their medical expenses. But some say all of this came 50 years too little too late. Gruntal pretends that there was no testing knowledge available at that time which said that giving drugs to pregnant women could cause birth deformity. It was well known in the 30s and 40s and 50s that it could happen and all reputable pharmaceutical companies at normal routine did this test to make sure that drugs would not affect the newborn fetus. If what these people claim are true, this company lied for half a century and caused a worldwide epidemic all over a little pill, and these people are still forgotten and neglected no matter how much this company tries to apologize. And who could blame them? One day of an apology can fix a lifetime of health issues and odd looks. The case of thalidomide is an interesting one. You have two generations of people with extreme disabilities and handicaps, and they might not even be getting proper compensation. On the other hand, this tragedy was vital in preventing future ones to come, and the drug that started it all is still used as legitimate treatment for terminal illnesses. At the end of this case, it presents a utilitarian anomaly. Is the prevention and treatment of millions in the future worth the pain and struggles of thousands in the past? We can't say, but there is no doubt that the story of thalidomide is both a triumph and a tragedy.